so atomic structure the uh, first thing the basics uh, you pretty much would know how uh, what the basics are by now uh, the basics are that there's an electron a proton neutron and electron and they have different charges uh, the relative charge is plus one the neutrons are neutral electron is minus one and the relative mass is one for proton one for neutron and one over 18 36 and i also stated earlier when we were doing moles as well that i told you that this one is not exactly one it could be 1.001 .001. uh mass the relative mass it depends on the device the accuracy depends on the device and relative mass means and relative charge means the charges or the masses in comparison to each other the actual charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 power minus 19 coulombs and the actual charge of an electron is minus 1.6 times 10 power minus 19 coulombs now the other thing was that electrons exist or occupy orbitals these are high probability regions in space so these are regions around the nucleus <coughs> where there is a very high probability of finding an electron So electrons are going to be assigned different regions in space. Uh, so how many different types of orbitals do you have? You have an S orbital. Uh, what's an S orbital? An S orbital is a spherical orbital around the nucleus. And if there's an electron in it, the electron would be occupying that particular region. It would be moving so fast in that particular area that to an outside observer, it would look as if that the electron is occupying the entire area. So the entire area, it's like a fan. If a fan is moving, you don't know where the, where the wings of the fan, fan are. So you just see a circular region. And that circular region would be a high probability area where the, where the probability of finding the electron would be equal. To an outside observer, it would appear that the electron is everywhere in that particular area at once. So that's an S orbital, a spherical region around the nucleus. Then you have, <coughs> you have a P orbital. And a P orbital is that you have a nucleus and there's going to be and there's going to be two double shaped regions around the nucleus. That's what a P orbital would look like. And if there's an electron in this P orbital, then that electron would be occupying areas, but around in these two lobes. So this would be a high probability area of finding where a particular electron is. To an outside observer, it would appear that the electron is everywhere in that area at once. So that's a P orbital. Now P orbitals are directional. What that means is, that around the nucleus there are three axes there's x y and and z axis so around the nucleus there are three axes 
Now, P orbital is directional, uh, which means that uh, if you rotate a P orbital, a P orbital could be lying. This is the nucleus in the center. A P orbital would be could be lying on the x-axis. So the electron in the P orbital could be present on the x-axis. Uh, the electron could be lying on the z-axis. Or the third one is that the electron could be lying on the, sorry, this, this is the z-axis. So you have x, y, and z axis. So it's, it is directional. So there are three different types of p orbitals. This one, the pink one, is called the px. The blue one is called the pz. And the green one would be called the py orbital. And they have... So these three together, Px, Py, Pz, uh, they're known as the peace option. So they are known as a peace option. The S subshell would just have, I mean, the S does not really have uh, 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 different orientations, but the p orbital will have a different orientation. So if if somebody says that an electron is in a p orbital, it could be lying on the px, uh, or it could be lying in the px orbital, it could be lying in the py orbital, or it could be lying in the pz orbital. Together, this is called a p subshell. This is what a p subshell would would look like. So what's a subshell? A subshell is a group of degenerate orbitals. And then the issue is, what's a degenerate orbital? Uh, they're orbitals having the same identical orbitals, orbitals having the same energy level. Same energy, energy level, but different orientation or direction. So this is uh, what a subshell is. This is what is meant by the term subshell. So remember that uh, S subshell is, is, is not because there are no, the, uh, the S does not have different orientation. If you rotate a sphere, you get the same thing. So an S subshell uh, just has one S orbital. Now, similarly, you have a third type of orbital, which is called the D orbital. Now, the D orbital, uh, a typical D orbital, the electron density around the nucleus is it, it, it has a clover leaf shape. Now the shape of the D orbital, the electron would be in these four, four lobes around the, around the nucleus. Uh, the D also has many different orientations. So let's see if I have uh, the shape of the D orbital right now is not in your course, it's in A2. But let me... Take this. 
over here is how most of the orbitals would look like. So this is what a D would look like. A D orbital, uh, just giving you a brief overview, a D orbital would look like this, that it's going to have uh, four regions in space around the nucleus where there's going to be a high probability. Now those regions could be between the X and Y axis. And let me quickly... Just one second, this one is a better picture. So this one. So around, around the nucleus, there would be five different orientations of the D orbital. And there would be five different types of D, uh, and this is called a D subshell. They're all degenerate, which means that they have exactly the same energy level, except that the orientation is different. It could be lying between the Z and Y axis. Uh, the electron could be lying existing between the X and Z axis. It could be lying between the X and Y axis. It could be lying on the X and Y axis, or over here it could be on the, this last one is slightly different in shape. So the end result is if we summarize this, different shapes in which different orbitals could exist. If we summarize the subshells, So if you summarize all the subshells, uh, the first one is the S subshell. It only has an S orbital. Then you have a P subshell. Now these are names given to different regions in which electrons could exist. Then you have the P subshell. It's going to have three orbitals, Px, Py, and Pz orbitals. Then you have the D subshell. Uh, the D has five different orientations, DXY, DXZ, DYZ, then there's DX square minus Y square, and then you have the final one is DZ square. And there's another one which is rarely appearing anywhere. That's called an F, F subshell. And it has seven different F orbitals. Hardly any atom has this particular, particular uh, orbital. Now you have uh, S subshells, P subshells, D subshells. Now remember each orbital can accommodate a maximum of two electrons. So all these orbitals that we have discussed, for example this P orbital over here, it cannot have more than two electrons. That's the maximum number of electrons that can occupy any of the space or any, any of the regions in space. So based on that, the S subshell can have a maximum of two electrons. The P subshell can have a maximum of six electrons. Why? Because you can fill up the Px you can, with two electrons. You can fill up the Py with two electrons, the Pz with two electrons. Uh, similarly, the D subshell could have a maximum of 10 electrons. And the F subshell can have a maximum of 14 electrons, because there are seven different F orbitals. So what we have learned so far is that there are different uh, regions in space where electrons could exist. Uh, in each region in space, in, in each orbital, a maximum number of two electrons can exist. Uh, the different shapes, the S is spherical, the P is uh, double shaped. You can remember, you, you'll be asked about the shape of the P orbital. 
so this is referred to as double shaped with two lobes this is obviously called spherical and uh, no one is going to talk about the d yet i mean you should know this knowledge should be there that d has five orbitals okay I'll, i'll link it up with o levels okay so the so just a quick recap uh, electrons are not going to be occupying uh, i mean around the nucleus okay if there's a nucleus an electron around the nucleus if it's it won't be occupying or spinning like i mean previously you had the bohr roth ford model which was that electrons were behaving as uh, as these planets moving around the nucleus which is not true the electrons are more behaving more like flies around sweets okay so those flies are constantly buzzing around and they're buzzing around and they're occupying a specific region in the space so this electron could exist or could exist in a in a spherical uh, in a in a double shaped region around the nucleus so it would be buzzing around this nucleus in this in this specific area so that's a more uh, correct model of what an atom actually looks like i said now the thing is you have all these regions around the nucleus where an electron could exist so how do you decide and how do you figure out uh, uh, where the electron would exist and another thing is we need to discuss one more thing which is shells now in o levels we studied that electrons exist in shells so what are these shells for example if you have a sodium atom a sodium atom has three shells okay we never learned about subshells we never learned about orbitals but we did learn about shells in o levels so what are these shells so for example sodium has two electrons in the first shell eight in the second shell and the th- last electron is in the third shell now the reality is that the correct word for shells is called the principal quantum number in reality so it's uh, it's the principal it's going to be called the principal quantum number or you can call it the shell number but principal quantum number is the more correct version i said what is the shell indicate it tells you the energy levels it's not a description of the shape of the of where the electron is uh it tells you the energy level of an electron and it's usually mentioned like if you have an electron in the s subshell it's written i mean this number in front of it is the shell number so it could be 2s this 2 indicates the energy level there could be 3s this 3 would indicate the energy level it wouldn't mean that this uh, 3s orbitals it just means that the energy level is 3 uh what so what does it means that this electron is at a lower energy level and this electron is at a higher energy level I said, so how would that? So let's say there's an electron in the one s. One s is one indicates the lowest energy level. That means that around the nucleus, the electron would be very. If it's very, if it has a very low energy, then that would indicate. Yes, energy levels are shells. Okay, but remember, shells don't have any physical. I mean, in all of us, you studied that there were basically these physical circles around the nucleus where electrons would exist. 
Now shells, uh, it simply means principal quantum number or the energy level of an electron. It's not a physical thing. It tells you how energetic the electron is. So if an electron is in the first shell and in an S orbital, so the electron would be occupying a tiny area around the nucleus, a spherical area around the nucleus. It would be buzzing around that in that tiny spherical region. So this is an electron that's belonging to the first shell and it's in, a, in an S orbital. But if the same electron is in a 2S orbital, then that would mean that it's more energetic. That would mean that uh, around the nucleus, because the electron is more energetic, so it's, it would be occupying areas much further away from the nucleus. It could overcome the attractive forces of the nucleus and it can occupy regions much further away from the from the nucleus so here's the nucleus in the center so that's that is what's going to happen that this is how the electron would appear if the electron changes shell similarly if an electron is in a 3s orbital belonging to the third shell then the electron would be even more energetic. And if it's more energetic, it's going to occupy a region that would be much, much bigger because the electron would be able to go much further away and it would eventually occupy a much bigger space around the, around the nucleus. So this is what is meant by the shell. Uh, we can link shells with orbitals over here. Just remember, orbital is the space where, where the electron, it's the type of space the electron is occupying. It could be a spherical region, it could be a double-shaped region, or it could be a clover leaf shape region. Uh, subshells are a group of orbitals, like uh, the P subshell is composed of Px, Py, and Pz, because there are three different types of P orbitals. The D, there are five different types of D orbitals. And what does the shell tell you? The shell tells you how energetic that electron is. So if it's in the first shell, then that means the electron is not very energetic. The electron would occupy a region which would be very close to the nucleus. If it's in the third shell, that means the electron is very energetic and it would occupy areas much further away from the nucleus. Okay. Are the three concepts clear? Shells, subshells, and orbitals. Is this clear to everyone? <coughs> Achha, so next class, we're going to learn how to actually fill at fill electrons. Like if sodium has 11 electrons, so in which orbital would those 11 electrons go to? Which orbitals would they occupy? Because you have so many orbitals. You have, uh, you have D orbitals, you have P orbitals, you have S orbitals. So if sodium has 11 electrons, where would those electrons end up? And in which subshells would they go to? And what energy levels, what shell numbers would they have? Would they be energetic or would they be? How are we going to discuss all of that, okay? Um, remember the rule is, the rule is that think of a nucleus. The rule is that electrons would first occupy regions close to the nucleus, right? Once those areas are filled up, then electrons would be occupied, would be occupying regions, regions that are further away from the nucleus. It's like a, it's like a magnet attracting nails. Uh, the inner shells, the inner regions would be filled first, and then the outer regions would be filled. Uh, so that's the rule. The lowest energy, the lowest energy orbitals and sub and subshells are always filled first, close to the nucleus. So we're going to learn how to actually fill them. How the energy levels can change. We we will talk about that as well. Okay. So we'll talk all of about that in the next class tomorrow then, okay? So, okay, if you, uh, any other question?
चलिए ठीक है लेट्स कर न्यू टुमारो देन ओके टेक केयर अल्लाह हाफिज़